Alright, what's up guys? Thanks for stopping by my channel. My name is John and today we're going to be learning how to do a neon text effect in Adobe Illustrator. You can take a similar process to this and do it in Figma or Sketch or really any other design program, but today we're going to be taking a look specifically at Adobe Illustrator because it's what I typically work in. But definitely feel free to try this in other programs and let me know your results in the comments if you feel so inclined. If you want to see a super condensed version of this tutorial, I'll put it right at the end of the video uh, at this timestamp. I'm going to do a full walkthrough in this video, but for people who are more familiar with Adobe Illustrator and don't necessarily need all of the information that I'm going to give, you can just jump to this timestamp and you can see it in a really condensed version. I always hate watching giant long tutorials when I really only need a small piece of information, so hopefully this helps some of you guys out. If you enjoy videos like this, it would be awesome if you'd leave a like below or a comment for the YouTube algorithm. and. If you want to see more content like this, it would be awesome if you'd subscribe to the channel. All right, with all that out of the way, let's jump into the video. Uh, I'm going to switch to my computer webcam, so apologies for the quality loss. All right, so the first thing you're going to obviously have to do is open up Adobe Illustrator and then click Create New Document. For this, what we're going to do is just a 1920 by 1080. Obviously, you can make this whatever size you'd like, but 1920 by 1080 is a pretty standard size. So we're going to do that. And once you have your Illustrator file open, we're just going to zoom out so we can see the whole artboard and create a rectangle. The shortcut for that is M if you want to be a little faster. And then you can drag a rectangle over your whole artboard. Now that we have that, what we're going to do is just get rid of the stroke. And for our fill, we're going to do a darker, a darker, uh, like a bluish gray. So uh, really the only thing that you got to worry about here is making it kind of a darker color so the neon really pops off of it. You can do any hue shift you want, but for this I'm just going to do like a bluish gray. Okay, cool. Now that we have that, we're going to lock this into place so that when we're editing our text, we don't accidentally bump the square. So to do that quickly, you can hit Command-2 or Control-2 if you're on Windows, and that means we now cannot uh, bump this square anymore. If you ever need to undo that, you can just hit Command-Option-2, which will unlock it, but we want it right where it is for right now. So from here, what we're going to do is create some text. So we'll just type the word, how about rad? Uh, one thing I would say is that you probably want to make sure that your text is all capitals. Um, a lot of neon signs are all capitals, but you can do whatever you want. That's just my personal preference. And then what we're gonna do is mess with the font. Again, you can do whatever font you want, but I would recommend that you go with kind of a bold one for this tutorial. So for this, what we're gonna do is Helvetica, and we're gonna do Helvetica Neue, Neue, not sure how you say that, and we're just gonna do Helvetica Bold. So now that we have that selected, what we're going to do is actually get rid of the fill and instead make this a stroked letter. So for this, I think I'm going to do like a little bit of an orangish, orangish red. Again, you can do whatever hue you want, but I would recommend that you kind of go with a saturated color. Most neon signs are pretty saturated. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. You can copy this hex code if you'd like to do exactly what I'm doing. So now that we have that set, what we're going to do is actually just increase the stroke maybe to a two-point stroke a little bit, so we get a little more. Uh, and then I would recommend that you actually create a copy of this text. Just over here for safety, if you mess anything up, you always got uh, an extra backup copy. Okay, and then from here what we're going to do is actually click on our stroke panel, which is up here on the top bar, and we will round the caps and round the corners. So that means when we cut the text a little later on, everything's going to be rounded off. That'll make sense in a couple seconds. So now that we have that selected, what we're going to do is actually create outlines. Before you do this, make sure that the text says whatever you want it to say. Um, because from here on out, you won't be able to actually retype anything else, but you will be able to edit a lot of other things about the text. So to quickly uh, create outlines, what you can do is Command-Shift-O or Control-Shift-O if you're on Windows which will create outlines for the text. And then from here what we're going to do is create some cut lines. So in all neon signs, uh, neon gas basically passes through the sign and then is uh, excited by electricity. Um, it excites the electrons and that's what kind of creates the neon sign glow. So we got to make sure that our neon sign that we're creating in Illustrator has that same thing. So what I would recommend is to make sure that the stroke is uniform throughout the whole thing is create a little guideline for yourself. This is basically just going to make sure that uh, the size of the cut line that you make is the same for each one of the letters. So what we'll do is copy that for each one of these and make sure you hold shift so that it stays in the exact same place. 
Okay, and then what we'll do is use our cut tool to cut lines in the text. So you can do that with a shortcut C or else click this little scissor icon over here. And then we're going to make a cut basically the same size as all of uh, the strokes that we made earlier. And then to delete those, you just hit the backspace or delete button twice, which will remove the line itself as well as the anchor point. Um, go ahead and do that for each one of your letters. For this A, it's a little bit more tricky because we got to shift it to make sure it's about the same uh, same angle as the upward line on the A. Uh, it doesn't have to be exact, but try to get it close. I think it makes it look look a little bit better. And then we'll select this stroke, and what we'll do again is just delete the line as well as the anchor points, and then from here we can delete all these little guidelines that we made. Okay, that's already starting to look pretty good. So what we'll do is just zoom out a little bit, select this text, and what we're going to need to do is actually just copy six of these texts. This is going to help us kind of create our neon glow. So we'll do one, two, three, and you're going to want to hold shift so these stay directly above your original line of text. So now we got four. So now that we have our six pieces of text, what we can do is add a Gaussian blur to each one of these. Uh, this is, again, what's going to kind of create that uh, glowing effect. So what we'll do is go over to our effects panel over here on the right. If you don't have this over here, you can come up to the effects panel over here and just go over to the blur effect and click Gaussian blur. For our first one, what we'll do is hit 1 which will apply a one pixel Gaussian blur to each one of our texts. Okay, so now when you zoom in, you can kind of see, not super well with one, but you can kind of see a little bit that it starts to blur the text a little bit. It's not perfect like Photoshop because this is a vector-based program, but um, one, once you export it, it'll look pretty good. So for each one of these, we're going to actually be slightly increasing the amount of blur that we have uh, all the way up to 10 pixels of blur. So uh, what I would do is basically slowly ramp that up. For this first one, what we're going to do is go over and edit this effect. and Maybe we'll do a 2 pixel blur. For this next one, what we'll do is up that again a little bit to maybe a 4 pixel blur. And then keep going until we get to our 10 pixel blur. So maybe this one will do six, this one will do, uh, how about eight, and then this last one will do a 10 pixel, full 10 pixel blur. Okay, now that you have the blur applied to each one of these layers, you're going to want to make sure you click this top layer and bring it all the way to the front. If you don't, all these previous blurs will kind of start to make the text look a little bit muddy. So we'll quickly bring that to the front by doing command shift bracket, uh, and that will bring that right to the front. Uh, it's control shift bracket if you are on Windows. So now that we have that copied, what we'll do is just slowly drag these back down, holding shift to make sure it stays in the same exact place. Okay, great. And right right away, that's a pretty, pretty solid neon glow, but we're gonna actually step it up a little bit uh, by adding a gradient to the top layer. So now that we've moved this top layer of text off of the blurred layers, what we're going to do is add a gradient to this top layer. And we can do that by clicking the gradient tool over here on the left and ended, uh, selecting colors for our gradient. So what we'll do is select this black over here and take our eyedropper tool to make sure we get the same color as this text. Okay, so now you can see that this kind of created a gradient from white to red. So now that we have the gradient applied, what we can do is make a few additional points by clicking one of these gradient points and alt clicking and dragging over so that it uh, creates another point that'll basically just copy it for you. What we're going to do is actually move this white one to the center. Um, and from there, we'll copy a couple more points. And then just add a, another white stroke in between these. And you're just going to kind of want to make sure they're sort of evenly spaced. It doesn't have to be perfect. It might actually be a little bit better if it's not totally evenly perfect because uh, it kind of mimics the weird, unnatural glow of a neon light. So from there, you can also adjust the angle. For this tutorial, I think what we're going to do is actually give it a little bit of a 30 degree angle. It's kind of a unique look, uh, kind of gives it a little more movement. And I'm pretty happy with that. So then what we can do is take this upgraded top layer and drag it down onto the previous text. Just make sure it's totally centered. 
So now we have a pretty well done neon gradient. So all this is pretty easily editable. If you want to change the stroke or anything like that, you can just up that or decrease that. Uh, and what I think I'm actually going to do is select this top layer and lower the opacity a little bit so it doesn't glow so bright. So I think that we're going to stick right around there, maybe like a 60% opacity on top. And then that's like pretty much done. That's pretty much what we need for a neon sign effect in Adobe Illustrator. Uh, let me know if this video helped you guys out. It would be awesome to hear from you in the comments. Uh, and if you have any questions, also feel free to leave them below. Uh, I really enjoy making videos like this and I hope they help some of you guys out. If you wouldn't mind subscribing to the channel, if you want to join this creative community, that would be awesome. Uh, and yeah, thanks again for watching guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Later. Okay, so in short, basically what you need to do is obviously open up an Illustrator document, cover your artboard in a dark rectangle. It has to be dark kind of for the neon to really pop off of it. You're going to type whatever text you want. I would recommend a bold font so that you can create an easy stroke around the outside. Then you're going to get rid of the fill for that. You're going to increase the stroke to around maybe like a couple points. And then from there, what you can do is change the color. I'm going to go with a red for this tutorial, but obviously you can do whatever you want. The only thing I would recommend is that you kind of go towards more saturated color since neon is usually pretty well known for being super saturated. Um, and then you're going to want to go up to your stroke panel and round the caps and the joins so that when we cut the text a little later on that everything will be rounded off and not jagged 90 degree corners. And from there what you'll do is create outlines by hitting Command Shift O on a Mac or Control Shift O if you're on Windows. From there what you're going to want to do is cut out different sections so that it kind of looks like a neon sign the way that neon signs obviously have those little sections cut out so that the gas can flow through them. Um, then you're going to want to copy about six versions of this. This is a variable you can play with depending on the look you're going for. And then you're going to uh, adjust the blur on each one of the six new types that you created to uh, between 1 and 10. I would slowly ramp up from 1 to 10. And what I would do to kind of spice it up a little bit is add a gradient. And then that's going to kind of create the look that the gas is slowly moving across the sign like neon signs do. I'm pretty fond of adjusting the angle of the gradient to around 30 to 45 degrees but you can obviously do whatever you want. I just think it kind of creates a little bit more movement in the design. And then what you're gonna do is just drag that top layer back on top of your blurred layers and you're pretty much done. If you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing to the channel, that would be a huge help. Uh, I hope you guys who are more advanced in Illustrator appreciate the condensed version of this tutorial, even though it's probably gonna end up lowering my watch time. Uh, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like below, that would be a huge help and kind of make up for me losing all that watch time on my video. All right. Thanks for watching. Later.